Let's start with the first of the patterns on the data or the integration layer. The most famous pattern of the data layer is called the data access object. It's also called the DAO, DAO. I mean, there are different ways we refer to it. But data access object is quite a common thing which is used in most of the projects. A data access object is basically responsible for a few things. One is a data, you need to have a lookup on the database. So you need to get a reference to the database. Probably a database ac data access object uses something like a service locator to get a reference to the database. These days, the database connection is injected into the data access object through a framework like Spring. So Spring gets you define the connection to a database in a spring context somewhere and it would be injected into the data access object. So a data access object has a access to the database connection. And the other things which the data access object takes care of are how to do a query. So how do I query, what kind of query should I send to the database? How do I get the data from the database? So the data access object, when I'm using JDBC, would be worried about queries. And when I'm doing, let's say, a JPA, or I'm using an ORM like Hibernate, it would be worried about executing the query and getting the results back, and how to map the results back to the Java objects. When we are using JDBC or Spring JDBC, data access objects have a lot more responsibilities than when we are talking about something like a Hibernate. In things like Hibernate, data access objects are kind of very, very, very simple. All that they do is they call the query, which needs to be invoked, or they call the appropriate data JPA method, which needs to be called, and that's it. The rest of the things would be taken care of by the JPA. Let's look at a couple of examples. What you're looking at right now is a typical DAO, which is implemented using Spring JDBC. What it does is it does the, let's say, I want to insert a query or insert a to-do. So it does jdbc.update runs the query with passing in the details and it would return the result back. Let's say I want to retrieve all the to-dos which are there in the database. So it would run a query and it use a mapper. So it needs to map, it needs to list, uh, return a list of to-dos. So what we have is a mapper. So the mapper maps from the result set to the to-do object. So this is how the DAO object would look in things like Spring, M, Spring JDBC. The connection it needs is typically injected in. This example is from our Spring in 28 minutes repository for Spring JDBC. The same DAO object when we are using a JPA looks completely different. The student repository in here is a DAO. This is an example from our project, Hibernate JPA step-by-step, step, and we are still doing a little bit of work on here. So this particular piece of code is from our work in progress.md. If you look at this DAO, it's a repository. So it's defined as an at repository, which says this is kind of a data store. So it's, it takes care of communication with the database and it uses the entity manager. JPA defines something called an entity manager, which you can use to do the queries. So if I want to get a student from the database, I say entity manager dot find student with ID and I can insert a student by using entity manager. I can update the student and also you can get the list of students back. If you look at this particular student repository, it's very simple. I mean, this is the same DAO, but the fact is this DAO becomes very simple because all that it needs to concern with is using the entity manager and making the appropriate JPA call. That's all the DAO would be concerned with. The actual mapping would be actually taken care of by the JPA or the direct mappings that we would give in here. So if you look at this particular thing which uses the JPA, this is a student object where we are actually mapping it in. So we are saying this is the table you need to be stored in. So the table is student and this is an ID and this has a one-to-one -one mapping with a passport. And this is the query. So all that kind of stuff is directly defined on the model itself with JPA. So on the student object, it's all defined and JPA knows how to store a student and get it back. All that the data repository does is 
to call the appropriate JPA method. All this might seem a little confusing because we were looking at different kinds of data access objects which are used with different kinds of technologies, Spring JDBC, JPA. If it's a little bit confusing to you, I would really recommend take some time out and look at the projects. I mean, look at the projects which we refer to and you should be able to understand them clearly. Data access object is nothing but a simple class which enables easy communication with the database. So it takes care of all the things which are involved with talking to a database and getting the data out of it and mapping to an object. So typically the input to a data access object would be what data you want to save to your database or what data you want to get from the database and the output is the data you want. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.